Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at something a little more nostalgic, so we're going to go all the way back to the year of 2011 to look at the PlayStation Network outage of 2011. Third of the PlayStation lineage, second best in the console wars, and number one in my heart, the PS3. What an absolute train wreck. Truly, nothing was like it on the marketplace. More expensive, no party chat, no Halo, Call of Duty DLC is a month later, but hey, at least we got access to PlayStation Network for free, unlike those scoundrels over on Xbox 360. No, two small, slight little issues. It was awful, and and the date of the April of the 20th, 2011. On this day, a young Jolet came home from school, came, and then got ready to hop on Black Ops 1, one of the best Call of Duties of all time, in fact, rocking that Galil with the suppressor, of course, and then proceeded to die because some little bitch decided to use a second chance because he never got a second chance of being loved. But it did not work that day, much to my horror. All there was was a message saying, PS and was under maintenance. Now this has happened before, in fact I can attest to the fact that it happened all the goddamn time, but this was different because no matter how many hours passed it just never came back and when I went to load it up the next day, again, it was down. Mm, PlayStation Network, like, really? I gotta deal with my girlfriend. See, what I didn't know at the time was, three days earlier, on the 17th of April, Sony had been the target of a massive cyber attack, the largest in the company's history, by what was only described as an external intrusion. Now, this wasn't what shut down the network, that was done by Sony in response to what the hackers had got access to. Of the 77 million PSN accounts at the time, 77 million of them were compromised, leaking people's usernames, emails, passwords, home addresses, and credit card details. That last one especially is pretty damn bad. Naturally, like any upstanding corporation, Sony would downplay this massively, saying, No, 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 you see, why? While our passwords were not encrypted, they're kind of like encrypted, we didn't break any laws. Please ignore the fact we kept our passwords in a folder called passwords, that's just common company practice. Honestly, it gets even funnier with credit cards, because out one mouth they would say, all credit card information on systems is encrypted, and there is no evidence at this time that credit card data was taken. And then out another would say, eh, but we cannot rule out the possibility. Oh, and by the way, we're going to warn you about this one week after the breach. Sorry. In their defense on this point though, there is a very limited evidence that any customers had money stolen from their accounts and most of the claims are just unverified. But the fact it was very much a possibility for a company as big, influential and successful as Sony to have had their customers' credit card details stolen is, to quote Donkey Kong, bananas. However, while those claims are unverified, you wanna know what is? The fact that one week later, the net Network is still down. Sony's security was so ass in fact, and because encryption of data was more of a suggestion over there, they had to almost entirely rebuild their defenses to ensure the network could safely come back online. Now, some would say I lived through this nightmare, but from my point of view, I survived it and should be classified as a hero because others were not so lucky. Take one of my best mates at the time, who we'll call Barry, because that was his name, Get Docs the Nerd. One week without access to PSN, and he caved in and switched over to Xbox 360, the fucking audacity. And this was very much a common occurrence, there aren't any official numbers, but I know through the grapevine a fair amount of people that switched over to Xbox 360, so Microsoft was having an absolute field day. Officially, it took just over three weeks for PSN to be resurrected from the dead, which is absolutely not true by the way, it was way longer than that, I, I went into this video remembering it lasting like at least a few months and I'm not crazy, don't say Mandela effect or anything like that because you're wrong, you're wrong, I swear it was down for longer than
than that. So now I think with the overview out of the way, we should start to look at the how, who, and why. Unfortunately, in the official sense, none of these questions have any satisfying answers, but there is a lot of interesting speculation. For example, in the how department, it's assumed that the hackers used the various phishing techniques to get company passwords and emails and then using them to get even deeper into the database while also using things like SQL injections to gain access over the network and acquire all the data they could want. That's honestly quite a basic and simple look at it, but it's all we really have to go of. For the who and why, however, it's a bit more complex. Again, there haven't been any criminal charges and no organization has taken responsibility for the hack, but the theories are quite wild, with the most popular one being that it all started due to Sony removing Linux support from the PlayStation. You heard that right, and not only at one point could you run Linux on your PlayStation, which is news to me, it was also very controversially removed, let me explain. Basically, early PS3s had something called OtherOS, which among other things allowed you to install an operating system like Linux onto your PS3, unlocking the ability for your console to also be used as a home computer, a rather novel concept at the time. Crucially, this access to Linux was also big in the homebrew modding community out there, so you can guess what kind of hilarious joke as Sony cooked up on the 1st of April 2010. That's right, a very poor choice, as other OS would be removed from the PlayStation following a firmware update, meaning you now could no longer access PlayStation Network while also running Linux on the same device. And the official reason given for this, they were worried about security concerns. One often meets his destiny on the road he takes to avoid it. Let's play the guessing game again, shall we? What do you think the response from the community was during this time? Correct, they were not happy, and one man named George Holtz took matters into his own hands, as soon after this firmware update, he would successfully jailbreak the PS3, giving users back the ability to download Linux. Now, Sony did not take this news well and proceeded to sue George for this. Now, the hacking group Anonymous did not take this news well and proceeded to write an anime monologue declaring Operation Sony a go. Now, why not use the far superior name Operation PlayStation 3, my boy? I'll never know, but the plan was rather simple. Sony bad and we are going to protest. On around the 4th of April 2011, they temporarily took down the PlayStation website with a DDoS attack and kept their attention on Sony all the way up until April the 9th five days later. This is when they would announce their pausing Operation Sony as attacking PSN was hurting the customers more than the actual corporation. And this was a full eight days before the big cyber attack on Sony on the 17th. Now, as far as Anonymous is publicly concerned, this is where their involvement ends, as they have denied that the security breach was in any way linked to them. Meanwhile, Sony has subtly suggested otherwise, but no meaningful action has ever been taken. And in all honesty, there's not really anything else that points in their general direction, it's just the previous stuff. But if you do search up the 2011 PlayStation Network Outage and Anonymous, you will find a few news articles that do say they were involved. In the end though, it really doesn't matter. Sony was the only true loser in all of this. For example, that lawsuit against George, it got thrown out, so never went anywhere. And because of how aggressively disastrous their security turned out to be, they faced scrutiny not only from customers, but also politicians. With the UK, in fact, handing out a fine of £250,000. Whoa, 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 calm down there, guys. You're gonna leave them destitute. Then again, I highly doubt that amount was counted into the roughly $171 million Sony estimated the downtime of PSN, as well as upgrading their security, cost them. But at least at the end, it was all worth it. Sony learned their lesson, and they would never again have a security breach like this. Nope, not once, ever again. 
So that was the story of the 2011 PlayStation Network outage, a truly horrific time for humanity. It's arguably one of the biggest blemishes on Sony's record, it really just made them look completely and utterly incompetent. You wanna know who's not incompetent though? My channel members, you guys are the most competent people I know because you give me money and I really appreciate it. So a massive shout out to all of these lovely people on screen now. Now originally to end this video off I did have a funny little outro planned where I was gonna go and boot up the old PS3, get the old girl back in the game and just, you know, play a bit of Black Ops 1, see how it goes, but uh, uh that, that, didn't, that didn't work out too well. And uh, to understand why, I mean, uh, well... Okay, I've also just realised something for this entire thing, uh... This is the only controller I have. It's just an Xbox controller, I don't think that will... This ending segment was very poorly planned out. Blurry man.